Shalom Israel. Uh, I'm doing this video because I noticed that there's a portion of us that know that we're Israelites that don't really appreciate being Israelites. And I think a lot of that comes from a misunderstanding of the scriptures. See, and one of the biggest misunderstandings in the Bible is John 3.16. See, you got people all across the earth that cling on to John 3.16. But the truth is, they don't actually understand what that verse is saying. So I want to go into John 3.16 and break it down and get the proper understanding and see how that verse applies to us as Israelites. So let's start. Uh, John 3.16. And it says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now again, this is the verse that everybody across the earth clings on to because it says, for God so loved the world. All right, so when you read this verse, it seems like it's talking about every single individual in the world. Because it says, God so loved the world. But if it actually meant everybody in the world, then we would have a major problem with the Bible. Because see, the scriptures cannot contradict themselves. Now, in the beginning, it says, God so loved the world. So let's go in the same book of John to chapter 17 and verse 9 and read that. Now, this is Christ talking. It says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Now, wait a minute. If the Most High loves everybody in the world so much, why are we reading here that Christ says he doesn't pray for the world? That seems kind of strange. Wouldn't Christ pray for the people that the Most High loves? Of course he would. So we got to figure this out. Let's go to John chapter 6, verses 37 through 39 to get the understanding. All right. Verse 37 says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which have sent me, that of all which he have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Now, there's two things we got to focus on in verse 39. It says, and this is the Father's will which have sent me. Here it is, that all of which he have given me. Meaning there's a distinction between everybody in the earth and a group of people that the Most High gave to Christ. All right. He's making a distinction between everybody in the earth and a group of people that his father gave him. Then it goes on to give you a clue as to who those people are. It says of all which he have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again. At the last day. Now, let me say this. You know, you got people who say, don't worry about the Old Testament. That doesn't count anymore. Definitely the Christian church, for example, they tell you, don't worry about the Old Testament. Just start with the New Testament. Let me be clear about something. If you don't understand the history of Israel contained in the Old Testament, you will not understand the New Testament. Let me say it one more time. If you don't understand the history of Israel that's contained in the Old Testament scriptures, you will not understand the New Testament. Let me show you what I mean. It says in verse 39, that of all which he have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. See, that word again is very important because it says of the people that his father gave him, he's going to raise them up again at the last day. In order to be raised up again, you had to be up at one point before and then taken down. 
And the only way we can find out who that's talking about is to go to the Old Testament and get to history and see what happened. You can't be raised up again if you was never up in the first place. So let's find out who was up and then who was taken down. Because those are the people that will be raised up again at the last day. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. And we're going here to establish who was up in the first place. Now this is Moses talking to the children of Israel. It says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above, meaning up, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So we see here that Israel was set above all people on the earth by the Most High. Now the nation of Israel received this blessing, but later on we fell as a nation. And let's see what happened when we fell. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43. It says, The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shall come down very low. So now we understand that Israel was up above all nations, but then because of our sin, we fell down very low. And ever since we fell down low, the righteous part of Israel has been seeking to be raised up again. And that's why the disciples asked Christ this question when he rose from the dead. Here it is in Acts chapter 1 verse 6. When they therefore will come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Because see, Israel was the nation that was up and that fell and that needed to be restored again. That's plain. So when you put all that together, the fact that Christ says he doesn't pray for the world, but for the ones that his father gave him and that he's going to raise them up again. And then we go to the Old Testament and see that it was Israel that was up and that fell and that needed to be restored again. We know that John 3.16 is not talking about everybody in the world. It's talking about a group of people. And to prove that, I'm going to show you the definition of the word world. Because it doesn't just mean the planet Earth. There's multiple definitions of the word world. And we got to pick up the right one based on the scriptures. Here it is. This is from the freedictionary.com. It's on your screen. It says, world. Number one, the earth. Number two, the universe. Number three, the earth with its inhabitants. Four, the inhabitants of the earth, the human race. It goes on and on. But let's go down to number nine, letter B. It says, a class or group of people with common characteristics or pursuits. Let me read it again. A class or group of people with common characteristics or or pursuits. This is the proper understanding of the word world in John 3 and 16. How do we know? Because this is not talking about everybody. It's talking about a specific class or group of people. And remember, Christ said, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. This is a select group of people. And based on the scriptures, we can further prove who this group of people are. Let's go to John chapter 1 verse 29. It says, The next day John seeth Yahweh Shai coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of the Most High, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now here we see John saying, that Christ came to take away the sin of the world. But there's a clue in this verse that points to who the world is. See, all we got to do is find out whose sin Christ came to take away. And then we know who the world is. Because it says that he came to take away the sin of the world. So let's find out 
whose sin Christ came to take away. This is Acts chapter 5, verses 30 and 31. It says, The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him have the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So according to these verses, Christ came to take away the sins of Israel. Look at it. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Therefore, the world that John was talking about was the world of Israel. Not everybody, not the entire earth, not every individual, the nation of Israel. And the Bible backs that up. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. And it says, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without in. See, the world that is talking about is Israel. Look at it. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. See, you have to understand how to follow the precepts and the scriptures. It's the key to getting understanding. David said in Psalms 119, 104, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Let me show you what I mean. Notice it says that Israel shall be saved with an everlasting salvation. And when you go to John 3.16, it says everlasting life. It's talking about the same thing. See, the world in John 3.16 is the world without end from Isaiah 45 and 17, which is referring to Israel. Not every individual on earth. All right, let's get one last scripture. This is 2 Corinthians 5 and 19. It says, To wit, that the Most High was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Let's look at it again. To wit, that the Most High was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Now, what world was Christ reconciling unto the Most High? See, a lot of times we read scriptures and we just read them, but we don't dig into them. These words are in these verses for a reason. Let's look up the word reconcile and see what it means. For this, we're going to go to the online etymology dictionary to get the origin of this word reconcile. Here it is. Reconciles. It says, from reconciliere, to bring together again. Now I'm going to make the same point I made before. You can't bring something together again that was never together in the first place. In order to come together again, you had to once be together. Now we know, according to the scriptures, that Israel is the most highest people. They were the ones that he chose and set up above the nations who fell down low. That's who Christ came to reconcile. He came to repair that relationship, to reconcile or to bring together again the nation of Israel with the most high. It's not talking about everybody. So the world that was reconciled through Christ is talking about Israel. It's the same world from John 3.16 and from Isaiah 45 and 17. So here's the point. When John 3.16 says the world, it can't mean everybody because there are other scriptures that will contradict that particular meaning. So therefore, we know it's talking about a specific group of people. And we went through the scriptures and proved who that group of people was. So for those of you who know your Israelites, Understand what John 3.16 is saying. That's talking about you. For God so loved you, the nation of Israel, that he gave his only begotten son. So I hope you got some understanding. And with that, I say, Shalom.